Well, I got some feedback after the last video I did on this Soviet-era Belarus tractor. And they said, well, yeah, you know, these things have a lot of issues. And, well, why, you know, you, you should look at an American tractor because, you know, these things have issues. And American tractors, they're better. But I just happen to have an American tractor. We're going to take a look at it. Well, I can tell you from experience, every tractor, every car, everything mechanical, almost without exception, has issues. It's the nature of engineering. It's hard to make things perfect unless you're going to spend a lot of money. So, yes, I agree. This this tractor does have issues. Uh, the the starter the starter system is not the best. Uh, there are some roll pins and things that can break. Yes, I agree. Uh, design wise, you know, yeah, there's 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 some issues. Everything has issues. But you know. At the end of the day, I kind of prefer the issues on this tractor versus some of the other tractors out there. This tractor's kind of, you know, made to repair in a, you know, Siberian tundra with a crescent wrench and a screwdriver. Um, in my mind, you know, that's kind of a good thing because I like simplicity and I like things that are made to work on, you know, by the average person. Uh, you know, yeah, it's 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 got some starting issues. You do have to use the compression release as much as possible, but it, that's that's part of the design and that's part of the way it's made to work. If you don't follow the way it's made to work, you're going to have some issues. Um, you know, wiring and you know the battery factory battery cables are a little small, and these are things we can change easily. Uh, you know, we can we can upgrade some of the bad things and and we can make these things into a really nice tractor with not a lot of money. And by nice, I don't mean, you know, with air conditioning and power steering. And what I mean is, you know, you can go out and you can start it up every day without fail. And it's reliable and it's durable. And, you know, it won't just sit around in the shop half the year doing nothing. But basically, the thing I love the most about this thing is just the raw simplicity and durability of it. You know, it's air-cooled. There's, there's oil in it and not a whole lot of other liquids. Um, you don't have to worry about poking a radiator, or, you know, there's no water pump, there's, it's, it's a little simpler in that regard. Also, there's no electronic fuel shutoff solenoid, it's just this mechanical switch here, you know. It's, it's good old-fashioned air-cooled two-cylinder diesel. There's not a lot to go wrong with it. Um, there's the access plates in the proper thing, you can get to the, you can get to the clutch here for access and everything. Um, you can get to everything underneath really easy, you can get to all the linkages really easy. As far as repair goes, you, you can you can get parts for these things. Shockingly, you can get parts for these relatively easily. Uh, you can get pretty much everything you need. Um, but let's go take a look at our American friend out back. So what we've got here is good old American John Deere 5200 tractor. Um, it is also a diesel. It's not air-cooled. It's It's got a radiator and all the complications that go along with that. And uh, it's sitting out back here because it needs a bunch of repairs. Um, and you know, honestly, between the two tractors working on them, I'd rather work on the Belarus. And here's why. There's not a lot of access plates and things built in. It requires a lot of special tools that John Deere wants you to buy. If, if you if you want to do it according to their procedures and everything and this this goes for not just this tractor but a lot of other John Deere New Holland etc etc tractors and this one has a lot more electronics on it it's got a lot more relays it's got an electronic fuel shutoff solenoid which you'll see the fuel shutoff solenoid is malfunctioning and that's what this wire here is for uh, that's to activate the solenoid because right now the uh, activation system for that that goes through relays and all kinds of fancy uh, electro 
in the digital things is busted. Uh, also, this is sitting here because uh, the clutch doesn't work. And that's because it's got a really complicated linkage in there with a double throw-out bearing and two clutches, separate PTO clutch and all that mechanism. And there's something in there jamming them up. There's no access plates. We can't get to the actual linkage. So we got to split the tractor to get to that. And when you go to split the tractor, well, there's no frame or anything really to attach to here to put your splitting stand on. Uh, I'm sure you can get a special one from John Deere that they'll sell you. But you kind of got to fabricate your own thing here, and there's not much to attach it to. There's maybe one bolt hole on this side in the back. And on the other side, there's, there's no bolt holes whatsoever unless you start taking stuff apart. Um, so you got to finagle that and do some things. And basically, right now I'm fabricating my own brackets so we can just split this thing really easy. Which you don't have to do on a tractor like that that has an actual frame and other things. And it's just, you know, it's made to work on. But if there was an issue with the linkage with that, there's a big access cover on the side. We can just take it off. This thing doesn't really have much access plates. There's one down here on the top, buried by the steering column, that you can observe the top of the clutch, but you can't see the linkage. And there's one up here that you can see the flywheel, and there's another down on the other side that you can see the bottom of the flywheel. They don't do a lot. Um, yeah, I mean, sure, it's nicer to drive and everything, but... You know, it's got power steering and, you know, some whiz-bang electrical features and, yeah, they're nice. I, I, I won't disagree with you, but I won't lie. They're, those things are really nice. Unfortunately, in my world, that's just more to go wrong and more to break. I don't need power steering because I'm not out in the field all day steering the thing at really slow speeds. I, that's, that's, that's not what I do. If, if that's what you're doing, that's great, you know, it's... And, and if you can afford to have someone else come in and, and and fix your tractor like this one, then that's that's fantastic. Uh, you know, that's like buying a, a newer car like a Mercedes or something that, you know, it's really hard to work on, so you, you take it to the dealer. And if you have the money to do that, that's fine. I don't, because I'm poor as a jerk mouse. So I prefer the simple things in life that are easy to work on. And, yeah, I mean, you're not wrong these tractors the Belarus has its issues but I'm just pointing out that every tractor has their issues this solenoid thing this is a common thing these solenoids go bad a lot uh, you know the clutch linkage there's a special thing from John Deere they had to use a special grease on and on and on there, there's problems with the relays these, these things happen all the time you know the, the electronics and this is just a little John Deere when you get into the big John Deere's it's even worse and that's where the whole right to repair movement comes in and everything and it's a big thing, but, you know, I can work on that Belarus tractor all day long, and I don't have to worry about special things or computers or all that stuff. And that's just my preference. Everyone has their own preference, and, and that's, that's just the way it's going to go. Uh, you know, there's a lot of people out there who like John Deere, and that's fine. I, I, I like John Deere, too. And it's fine if you have the money to work on them, if you have the money to repair them. Uh, they require, you know, some expensive parts. We're probably going to have to replace the whole clutch on this thing while we have it apart. You know, there's... And I could do the same thing with a New Holland or a Case or, you know, it, it, on and on and on. It's just every... They all have their own quirks. They all have their own engineering issues and problems. You're, you're never going to find a perfect machine. But at the end of the day, I'll take the Belarus because... I like it. I'm a simple guy. I, you know, I just, I like simple stuff and I like things that are, you know, durable and dependable and that's just me. Everybody's going to have their own opinion and, you know, everybody's got their opinion, you know, leave it down in the comments, you know, don't be harsh because this, that, that isn't what this is about. This is about, you know, uh, not necessarily comparing, you know, American to foreign or any of that business. I'm just saying, you know, each, each, each machine whatever it, its origin or whatever <clears throat> they, they all have issues and there's always someone out there who, who loves them uh and no matter what it is i like the oddball things myself i, I like kind of the things that nobody else or that I, I like the things that few people tend to like um you know that's just that's that's one of my quirks and uh 
you know, people are the same way. You know, nobody's perfect. No machine is perfect. I thought this would be a great opportunity to, you know, kind of bring real life to, to, to the comments and, uh, you know, people saying, um, you know, well, why would you bother reviving that tractor even? You know, why, why would you, why would you fix that turd? Well, you know, in my mind, there's not really a bad machine out there. Everything can be fixed. Everything needs a little love. And just, you know, a well-loved tractor like a John Deere, they got their issues too. You know, that's, that's, that's all I'm saying. Which one, which one would I rather have run and drive? Uh, you know, the one I got because I like it. That's just, you know, everyone's entitled to their own opinion. And, uh, you know, we all like what we like. Some people are diehard John Deere, and some people are diehard New Holland, and and that's just the way it is. You know, it's like Ford and Chevy and the automotive world and so on and on and on and on. Uh, but, you know, just thought it'd be interesting to have a little discussion here. And since I had this thing sitting here, this is not mine, by the way. This is, uh, this is here for repair. And I thought this, you know, it's sitting here. I thought this would be a great opportunity to say, well, yeah, you're right, but everything has its issues. Even a well-loved tractor brand like John Deere, you know, they, they all have their things. And at the end of the day, that's not really a bad thing because just like people, nobody's perfect. So, anyway, leave what you think down in the comments. Be nice. This isn't about being nasty. This is just, you know... Everything has its quirks, everything mechanical, but we love them all, so, um, you know, feel free to like, subscribe, it's free, it doesn't cost you anything, and uh, we like to do things like this all the time, and and things like this in response to what we get in the comments, you know, in all three of them, but, uh, you know, kind of a, a real life, well, you're right, but here you go, you know, that kind of thing, so, if you want to see more of this, Subscribe so you can see us on the next one, and thanks for watching.